And the trio consists of, of Johnny and Hannah and Rowan, and Hannah's always in the middle. And I thought I won't fall into the trap of just having one on the top, one in the middle and one in the bottom, which, you know, could be probably how a lot of composers do it. I thought, no, I'm going to weave. So they have a kind of dialogue. So, you know, Johnny might start with some of the material and then Hannah would repeat it or maybe in a canon. So there's an echo effect. So it, it sounds like they're dialoguing. They have to look at each other quite a lot to make agreements where to come together because uh, they might have got out, you know, which is probably more my fault than their fault. But, uh, but actually I like that sort of performance aspect. So they're really communicating with each other. In new music, it's really important that the audience gets as much of a sense of what the music is about from one listening to it. They may, they may never hear it again. As an audience member, it's more exciting to, as well as hear the conversation, if you see, oh, he's looking at him now, so that means this, or mm. if you can see it, so it kind of reinforces the conversation, I think. Yeah, it comes naturally after sort of having played together for so long, but there are sort of point, points in the music where you know, it might be a hard passage, so we say, okay, well, here we're just gonna sort of re reassess where we're all playing. It's not not that it's artificially generated, of course. But. <laughs> they did a performance of it in the lab, uh, and it was it was nice because the audience was set all around them, and so they sat uh, in a different configuration to the way they normally do. With guitars, the, the sound is quite delicate, you know, so our ears were really drawn in. To them and I and I think it was just much more vibrant than when I composed it you know to hear it manifest alive that that's when the music really happens <laughs>